I am Buchin Mutlupaktil. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm an astrophysicist. The decision that I wanted to become a scientist happened in middle school assignment. My teacher gave us an assignment to write an essay about an ideal person. And I said, who is my ideal person? Who I want to be? As a first gen, you cannot imagine what future holds. You don't see an example. So it is hard to see yourself in a place if you don't have an example. I said to myself, I want to be the cleverest person in the world, which is, which is very simple, right? <laughs> I have an elder sister and I ask her who is the cleverest person in the world and she said I don't know maybe Einstein just check it out and then I became very interested in physics that he made and from now on I decided to get a physics degree. For college I went to Bilkent University. In Turkey at the time, there was a hijab band. So as a hijab baby woman, I was not allowed to go to an education institution. In my orientation, faculty member came to me and said, you are a woman and you are coming to Ankara for physics education. Are you crazy? Why are you doing this? And someone that I want to trust and I want to admire is questioning my presence there. That was really challenging for me. I don't remember those years as inspirational because I was trying to survive at those years. And then I came to the States, but you know, I didn't know how to apply grad school. So I applied to the Texas Tech. I only applied there because I had a friend there, but at the time there wasn't any astronomy program. So I did a biophysics master, which was very challenging for me because I was dreaming about getting an astronomy education. And suddenly I find myself in a biophysics lab pipetting proteins into tube and I am very clumsy breaking things all the time even my advisor said maybe you really should do astronomy and I I agree with him so instead of doing PhD at Texas Tech I did master's degree and I had such a big luck I find amazing mentors and they always help me to navigate the academia The biggest support that I had was from my family. My family didn't have a chance to get higher education. My father dropped out of fifth grade. I grew up listening his stories of how successful he was in elementary school and how much he wanted to go to a higher education, but couldn't get it because of the financial issue. So uh, when we were growing up, we always listened to these stories. If my father had a chance, he was dreaming becoming a president. I guess these kind of things showed us that we, we really needed education if you want to live our dreams. The critical thing that I remember after making it, I discovered this galaxy commonly referred to as Burchin's galaxy and I gave a TED talk about it and there were like millions of views, amazing. But then I looked at the YouTube comments and then I see the hostile comments about me. And then I just felt maybe I shouldn't exist because the people are commenting about my dress, my hijab, my behavior, the way how I pronounce. Seeing those, my religion, my beliefs, everything. And how can a scientist be a Muslim? Like all these comments, it really hit me from the core. I felt like nobody wants me here. Maybe I should shouldn't be here. That was horrifying. Then my sister, she said people also comment horrible things about adorable babies. There is no limit to people's comments, so you shouldn't take it personal. This is just ignorant speaking. Then I said, you are right. I shouldn't take it personal. It is really important for all of us to recognize the differences that we have in each other and celebrate those because that makes it unique and colorful. And I just hope if there's a little girl listening to us, that little girl don't think that their own identity is an obstacle 
to them. I hope they can dream without a limit and they can find their people who can support them to reach that dream.